So this comes to us from Bounding into Comics. And the uh, headline reads, Capcom attempts to run PR for Western uh, localizers, praises in-house team for keeping games, quote, culturally sensitive and promoting inclusivity through language and representation. So uh, something came out, I think, like yesterday or two days ago, uh, where it's basically shows like what kind of things that they're going to be doing these localize uh these localization com companies and gray um what have you heard about this so far uh i have not really looked into the story but i think they're making they're trying they're wokifying capcom so yeah good, good luck trying to do that to chun li in the next street fighter game let's see how that will, will play out well, yeah the thing uh, is that they, they sort of did it is because like Chun Li was originally voiced by I forgot this girl that's she's white and she's been doing it for a long time. But now that you can't, if you're not Asian, you can't voice an Asian character. If you're not black, you cannot voice a black character. So they ended up changing out her voice for Chun Li. Same thing with like Ada Wong, right? They ended up changing out Ada Wong's voice for RE4 versus RE2's voice is a lot better than RE4's uh, Ada Wong voice. But yeah, like it's it's, it's pretty. But now it's like in everything. And the thing is that like, I wonder if these people, these localization groups, like, like, I'm pretty sure they're like, haha, take that, right? Like, I I, I don't know, man. It's it's, it's pretty shitty. Do, do you mm -hmm. play any Capcom games? Uh, Not really. Wait, I, I can't even remember. What's... Dev Devil May Cry 4, but that was a long, long, long time ago. Yeah. I'm not really I'm not really that huge of a Capcom guy, honestly. It's like I right yeah. now it's like um in the gaming scene, um people are starting to speak up. Hey guys, Rise of the Ronin is actually better than Dragon's Dogma 2. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, like a week or two weeks ago, it's like, oh my god, Dragon's Dogma 2 is so good. But now it's like I'm saying, hey guys, Rise of the Ronin is actually better, even though the graphics uh, are not that good. The gameplay is better than Dragon's Dogma 2. So I don't know. This could be the start of Capcom like falling off again. Kind of like the PS3 yeah. and 360 generation. They're starting to fall off again. Hopefully they start to rebound as soon as possible. Man, uh, speaking of Capcom, like Capcom is known for um basically focusing on things that sell. And, and I get it, right? But the thing is that they also isolate their fan base by uh basically not putting in games that people know that we want. Like, I, I I really want another Mega Man X game, right? I really want Darkstalkers, Rival Schools. Uh, I, I really want uh, all, all of these really, really cool stuff to come back. Like, one main one is, uh, what's it called again? Um, uh, Freaking, yeah, M Mega Man X is like a huge one for me. Like, I don't know why they haven't been bringing that back. And it's just, they don't care. Like, I, I feel like they don't care. And now you have more stuff like this. So let's go ahead and read it. It says, in yet again, throwing their hat into the ongoing discord surrounding Western localizers, continual disrespecting of the Japanese media rather than committing to ensuring accuracy within their own localization team's work. Capcom has instead attempted to put a positive spin on some of the industry's worst practices. Uh, entering the fray on April 11th, by the way, of lengthy post published on the official Twitter account of their own in-house localization team. And this, this is not an outsource team. This is in-house. That means this, I'm pretty sure this Capcom, Capcom America, maybe? The Resident Evil and Mega Man series developer began their PR play by asserting to players localization isn't just about translating words. It's about adapting the game for a global audience. A uh, think a cultural nuances, idioms, and regional flair. A good localization makes players feel right at home, wherever in the world they are. So I'm pretty sure if they're if the character is not supposed to be gay, they're gonna make it gay. If the characters if the character is not supposed to be trans, they're gonna make it trans. I, I guarantee this is some of the small things they're doing. And the thing is that they're saying that it doesn't have to be like let, let's say in Japan it doesn't read like that, but in in America it it will read like that. Right? How, how do you feel like the fact that they're sort of um, yeah, uh, you know, using the demographic to uh, instead of just like using the words of the original creator. How do you feel? Yeah, that's I don't know. That's gonna be the start of Capcom's fall, I believe. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe it won't affect all their sales, but eventually it's gonna hurt their storytelling if they continue to let these people have a say in 
how the direction of their storytelling will go. So, <clears throat> yeah, good luck. Uh, very likely Capcom's gonna learn the hard way that it's yeah, it actually makes more money if you get these people out because they yeah don't hire woke activists. Yep. And speaking of Capcom, did you know that Captain Commando was actually the 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 original character based off of their name and they don't even fucking use that character anymore but let's continue let's see this is what this is what it says here what is localization it, embark on a global oh yeah go ahead before i continue i was yeah I was, it's just like is that that's the fighting that's the beat em up right captain commando i i remember playing yes that. It, yeah like, it's a beat em up game yeah it, it's like it's the the ninja and the baby with the robot that's the one yeah. right uh, yeah, yeah and the mummy. Oh God, I, I, I love that game. <laughs> Even though I suck, yeah. I love that game so much. Yeah, Captain Commando is awesome. Yeah, yeah. You fucking forgot yeah. about yeah. that they, shit. Yeah, they should make they should remaster that or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, embark on global adventure through the lens of game localization beyond mere translation. We're diving into the art of cultural ad uh, adaptation, pre uh, preserving context and inclusive storytelling. Join us as we unravel intricacies that make. <laughs> that makes uh sorry make games resonate worldwide not just translating localization isn't about translating words it's about adapting uh the game for a global audience think cultural nuances idioms regional flair a good localization uh, makes players feel right at home wherever they are in the world loss in translation nah preserving the vibe is key jokes references and even gameplay elements might need a little cultural remix it's important to find that sweet spot to make sure players get the intended experience without feeling like something got lost in the process bridging the linguistic gap uh each language has its unique structural structure and cultural context our teams work to ensure the narrative and dialogue maintain coherence and the emotional impact it's not just about words it's about capturing the essence of the story in a way that resonates with the target audience here it is cultural sensitivity in characters character designs and development must be culturally sensitive that may be acceptable in one culture sorry what may be acceptable in one culture might be offensive in another localizers play a crucial role in ensuring that the characters are relatable and res and respectful avoiding stereotypes and references that could be perceived as a negative in the specific cultures now i understand what they're coming from in terms of like making sure things are accurate right not making sure that things look like you know if, if you have an asian guy he's not like fucking wearing like a like a you know rice hat and has like a fu man shoe or something like it has like super small eyes like me but like if you're also talking about like what about like like characters like chun li you know like are they gonna like nerf her thighs is because you know like because if they're also they're not just changing the story but the character design as well right so they already sort of do this for nintendo but now they're coming out and saying the quiet part out loud when it comes to capcom so that means that something that might be you know not one-to-one -one with the story or how the character, the character maybe too sexy in japan and then in the philippines for example they're gonna nerf all the characters and make them look like boys because they have done this for like uh dragon quest and stuff like that like how, how do you feel like before i continue I'm not sure where he went. Oh, there he is. Okay, never mind. But yeah, but how do you feel? Uh, oh, like, wait. With, so, uh, uh, with, with, with basically like the fact that like localizers have the act, they actually said right here, character design and development must be culturally sensitive. That means that they have a say on how the characters even, not just what they say, but how they look like. Yeah, that, that, should, that shouldn't be the case. Like let, let creative um, creatives be creatives express how they want or how they want their characters to be like and what um mm -hmm. and how they fit to the story it's like uh the moment you start to stifle that that creativity that's when one um the the escape from real reality dissipates and the quality of the storytelling diminishes that that that's basically what's been happening to western entertainment for over a decade now and now they mm -hmm. want to try to breach the east, which I, I know it's not gonna fly. E even if they do manage to penetrate Japan to a certain extent, I think eventually it's gonna die down in Japan. And I, I can see Korea and even China rising up to the occasion 
And those two are not gonna bend the knee. If Japan, if Japan can, those two are gonna be more resilient, in my opinion. Especially China. It's not gonna go Ch- wokeness is not gonna reach China in any shape or yeah. form. Uh, let's continue. Let's see right here. Inclusive language and representation. Localization efforts extend it to promoting inclusivity through the language and representation. This involves adapting not only the linguistic aspects, but also addressing gender-specific language, cultural norms, and diverse perspectives. The aim is to create an immersive experience uh, where players from different backgrounds can identify with the characters and narrative. This can be very challenging for certain languages due to grammar. This is so fucking stupid, man. So basically, a character that wasn't meant to be LGBTQIA is now going to be LGBTQIA. Right? Imagine being like a the creator of um of a, a I don't know, like like Dante, right? Since it's, so we're talking about Devil May Cry here for Capcom, right? He's you know, he shows his chest, you know, he's sometimes not wearing he, he's never wearing a shirt, he's always wearing his um his actual uh his uh his cloak, his basically uh, trench coat. But now they're like, oh, since he's so flamboyant, let's make him gay with his brother. Right, I can see. I was like, "Oh, let's make him gay with his, uh, his, uh, his, his son, or you know, like some, some, some bullshit." Right, like it's. I, I can see them doing this is because they don't fucking care, right? They know that Dante is such like um, like uh, it's it's you know he's in what DMC five. There's an instance where he like he freaking danced like Michael Jackson. It's like, oh, if, if that's not show tunes, I don't know what is. You know, let's make him gay in uh, Devil May Cry, uh, six or some shit like that. I. This, this is so stupid. Like, they don't care. These people actually don't care about, like, the original creator's intent. It's like, oh, we're going to fucking purposely put our shit into it, whether we like it or not. And I I loathe these people. And the thing is that they know, they, they love the fact that they, they can actually have the ability to do it. It's, um, it's, it, it, it's so, like, I, I hate it, man. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Gray, inclusive language and representation. Yeah, I, I don't think I'll be. Yeah, I won't be playing Capcom games. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to any. I, I was it's like, uh, yeah, Monster Hunter. Anyway, it's like I find it the, the barrier of entry is really high in my opinion. I mentioned mm-hmm. this in my grand in my Grand Blue video. It's like, yeah, you have to drink cool Kool Aid if the weather's too hot. You have to drink hot hot cocoa if it's winter. It's like, no, nah, I, I don't want to. I don't want to contend with that kind of stuff for. But anyway. To the point, yeah, it's gonna hurt their games even more. It's like it's a shame because Capcom has been killing it lately. It's like, um, it's probably gonna start permeating once they run out of Resident Resident Evil games to remake, which they're getting close. They're getting close. like they just need to remake five and six, and maybe it's some of the spinoffs. Right, those are the only games that they haven't remade. But what? I can imagine this BS coming into Resident Evil 9. I wouldn't be surprised there's going to be like LGBTQ or trans characters in uh, Resident Evil 9 or culturally mm. sensitive people in Resident Evil 9. You're not going to see a Lady Dimitrescu anymore in Resident Evil 9. Nope. Yeah. That's probably what's going to happen, which is a shame. But yeah, Capcom needs yeah. to learn the hard way. All right, let's continue right here. Adapting humor and wit. Humor often lies on cultural references and wordplay, making it a challenging aspect of the uh, of the game localization. Translators must carefully navigate puns, jokes, and cultural references to maintain the intended comedic effect. This requires a deep understanding to the tar- uh, sorry, of the target audience's sense of humor while staying true to the original wit. No, that's what they sort of fucked up with um uh with uh, uh Kobayashi Dragon Maid. Basically saying, oh, um, talking about the patriarchy, right? That's that that wasn't even the original like translation. It's like, oh, why are you wearing that? It's like, oh, I thought, you know, you know, I thought it'd be funny, you know, or, or whatever. But localization, it's like, oh, you know, uh, you know, to make sure that you know the patriarchy. Or I'm like, what the fuck? Like, does happen doesn't have anything to do with the original joke, right? And this is yeah. adapting humor. Like, no, you're not adapting humor, you're basically changing and rewording the humor. And that's the reason why I prefer, especially when it comes down to the original, uh, the original source. I prefer to watch the actual, uh, the actual content in in the original like language with subs, right? I'm fine mm-hmm. with that. But once they localize it, 
they change it up and stuff like that. And the thing is that these subtitles, they can potentially wokeify it too, but it won't make sense for people who actually speak Japanese. So, um, but overall, uh, it's it, it's pretty damning. See, consistency in terminology, maintaining consistency in terminology is crucial for a smooth and coherent gaming experience. This applies not only to translating words, but also ensuring that game mechanics, instructions, and lore are consistently represented across languages. Establishing a cohesive language system helps prevent confusion and enhances the overall gaming experience for players worldwide. So this is A, which is the, basically the actual um, uh, hiragana. But yeah, this is pretty dumb. I can, I, yeah, they, I, I see basically making uh, Dante officially gay with Virgil, which is <laughs> his brother. You know, they're going to be incest. You know, the Mega Man's going to be fully non binary. Is Mega them? Mega them. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be Mega them's chat, Mega they them's. And, uh, you know, he's going to be a uh, super, super non binary gayness with a uh, proto man. And zero, right? Zero basically have those or uh, those green boobs on him. So you know that that's gonna be a you know a transgender robots, right? But yeah, this is so stupid. Like I'm, you know, Cap. You know, we thought that Capcom was gonna come back. It's not. Capcom is gone. You know, no more Marvel versus Capcom. Uh, no, no more Mega Man. No more uh, rival schools. Freaking. Uh, no, no more Power Stone. Nothing. Everything is gonna be gone. And do you remember this? Gray, do you remember? Arm, do you know who Armika is in uh, Street Fighter Five? I've seen Street footage. Fighter series. She's like the I've wrestler, right? So here's the thing. Like, I'm not sure if I shared it, but the in her in her original critical arts, like in the beta, she basically slaps her ass like this. It zooms down and see her slaps her ass, and she points, and her and her um, you know, her her tag team partner comes up and uh, ass slams, which is a good way to die ass slams basically uh that the, the bad guys are that the, the opponent's face and then slams it to the ground uh i guess there's a lot of fucking woke fucks out there that basically hates the idea of a nice ass so what they did was they basically did not show they, 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 they did not move the camera down they just kept it like that right and people are like why did you change it oh it's because this is a fighting game not a sex game I'm like, <laughs> Mm. Oh, God. oh man uh yeah and, and basically they turn one of the characters in, into like an lgbtq ia plus you know character without having any background like that but yeah i'm i'm so done with capcom man i used to now it's called crapcom according according to what people are saying they're, they're crapcom now i think um you know what's actually saving capcom right now is street fighter 6 which is a, a good fighting game compared to mortal kombat 1 and monster hunter capcom has something else Right, uh, Resident Evil has a small player base compared to like Street Fighter and and um, it just and Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter is just so big now. You're removing them ass cheeks from the game. Yeah, it's yeah. I I I don't trust them anymore. Even though they make their, they they make their faces ash, uh, actually look correct, like the the actual like face captures of, of the models actually looks really really good. But the fact that if even though the game characters looks really, really cool, if you're just gonna gayify or, you know, like turn them into they them's, it's um, I I'm not gonna buy any of their shit anymore. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's sad. It's sad. How how do you feel, man? Yeah, it's, yeah. I there's no game for Capcom for me that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, it's a contradictory to yeah. Maybe we sh I should. Yeah, I just remember now. I should have posted it here for our topics for the week. So it's like there's a the game director of Visions of Mana says that no, we're not gonna pander to the BS. I'm gonna stick to my vision. M maybe we should look for that article actually. So now I'm like, oh, maybe it's like I was saying, I'm not sure if I should cover Visions of Mana in my main channel, but maybe I should after I heard the game director say that. So yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah, I saw some characters in the in the mana series. They're they're not bad looking. <laughs> the females are not bad looking. So maybe I should cover visions of mana. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.